Hydrogen is the most abundant chemical in the universe. There's hydrogen there and there and in those clouds and that tree. There's hydrogen in the room with you while you're watching this video. In fact, there's hydrogen inside of you. So with hydrogen literally everywhere, that must mean that Toyota's hydrogen powered Mirai is a must buy, right? Well, For 2021, Toyota's fuel cell hydrogen powered Mirai got a much needed design and tech makeover. It looks better and the actual technology that makes it go, it's actually gotten smaller. In fact, the car looks better, it drives better, and frankly, it would be a great vehicle for road trips, something you take on a nice long drive because it's comfortable. The only issue is, while hydrogen is literally everywhere in the universe, the hydrogen fueling infrastructure is not and it's only available in certain parts of California, which means this car is only sold in certain parts of California, which is a huge bummer. But before we get into all that, let's talk about the Mirai itself. Starting at about $50,000, design-wise, Toyota really wanted to make sure that those that want to drive, well, the potential future of transportation do so in style. Under that fancy facade sits a lot of tech. To begin with, Toyota says that it's taken the hydrogen powertrain that was in the first Mirai and made it more compact, lighter, and they have increased energy density, which means you get more energy from the same size space. Toyota was also able to reduce the price of the Mirai versus the first generation. So it's about a 15% reduction from $60,000 to $50,000. So for less money, you're getting a prettier car versus the first gen, which was, well, sort of an, well, it was an ugly car. Inside, the premium price tag pays off with a stylish luxury S cabin. Plush seats are surrounded by mid-level luxury materials and a sleek design. The digital dash cluster feels a bit cluttered, but it doesn't overwhelm with information. Meanwhile, the 12.3 inch touchscreen Toyota Intune infotainment system supports Android Auto, CarPlay, even Amazon Alexa. The only issue I have with it is during the day, this sort of white design kind of falls short of the rest of the design of the vehicle. It doesn't look as nice, but at night, when it goes into dark mode, it looks about 75% better. Display, I don't know why it's that, that's there. Uh, general. Wait, why wouldn't I go back to night mode? Oh shit, can you not turn on my night mode in, in the day? The only issue with that is that you can't just put it in dark mode all the time like you can with your phone, which is sort of a bummer. The Mirai also has a voice assistant, but it's less like MBUX's conversational style and more scripted. It works, it understands what I say, but you kind of have to follow along with the prompts. A rear view mirror camera is available and as a fan of these systems, I dig it. It removes any issues you may have with rear passengers blocking your view and gives you a wider area of visibility. The dashboard layout is striking. It has this really nice sort of thing that curves down, but it does put the climate control about two inches too far away. If you wanna adjust your defroster, you gotta reach. I have long, crazy you know, gorilla arms, but your average person, they're gonna have to really reach if they wanna adjust the defrosters. Oh, and there's an H2O button. You just push this button right here and water spills out from the bottom of the car. In fact, that's the only emission of the Mirai, water. Inside, both the front and back seat are comfortable, although the back seat does take a hit in leg room when you sit behind someone tall. Also, the seats feel higher than they should be, which could cause problems with anyone taller than me. In the back seat, especially, what they've done is they've sort of carved out like a little cubby into the ceiling so that my head fits here, which works unless I want to nod my head and then I can feel my hair touching the headliner, which is weird. But if you're not, well, super tall, the backseat is actually has some pretty luxurious features, especially for a Toyota. In fact, there's this little control center back here. You can adjust you know, the radio, there's ventilated and heated seats. You can adjust the temperature back here. And if it's too bright, you can just put up the shades. This is all luxury features found in a Toyota. The tech behind the wheel for, well, for driving is a bit better. I especially like the fact that all the controls for the driver assistance is on the steering wheel, 
uh, a lot of times the lane keep assist is buried somewhere in the infotainment system or it's on a button or a stock like by your knee. It's, it's just, it, I, I don't understand why people put it in a really weird place, but it's right here on the steering wheel. That's great. As for how lane keep assist and lane steering work, they do an adequate job. You know, these systems aren't self-driving. They're really just sort of to help you stay in your lane, to keep you from sort of veering over. And it does just that, it, it's fine. The adaptive cruise control is actually pretty good. It, uh, it's not overzealous with braking and with acceleration, which can be a problem, especially if you're in traffic and let's say a couple cars move out of the way, if the car just takes off and then slams on the brakes, that can be a bit terrifying when you're behind the wheel. I will say that if you're in gridlock, like I am now, and the car does come to a complete stop, it will not automatically start rolling forward again when the vehicle ahead of you starts going. You have to tap on the accelerator, which is fine. That's not that big of a deal. Overall, the driving experience exudes a sort of calmness and the type of luxury you typically associate with Lexus, Toyota's premium brand. That said, the suspension, it's really soft and sometimes you do get some floatiness. So you'll go over a large bump and the car will do, continue to do this for you know, a few yards. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's comfortable. Um, you're not going to be going very fast in this car. Uh, you do have the benefit of EV torque, so you, you know, you, could, you get that. It does benefit for that, but the zero to 60 time is pretty pokey. It's 9.1 seconds. So you're definitely not going to be impressing any of your Tesla friends. And that's because it only has 182 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque. And that's dragging 4,400 pounds around. So it's, you know, it's, it's a heavy car. It doesn't have a lot of power, but as a cruiser, it's nice. The benefit of fuel cells over EVs is that a fuel cell vehicle only takes about five minutes to refuel, whereas an EV can take anywhere from 20 minutes to even a few hours, depending on the charging station. The Mirai also gets the benefit of having a range of up to 402 miles, and that's thanks to an additional third tank added to the vehicle when the last generation was only outfitted with two. That brings up the biggest issue with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Where do you refuel them? Toyota only sells this vehicle in California because there's at least a semblance of an infrastructure. And even here, it's a little difficult. Like right now, there is a fuel app on the Intune infotainment system. And you know, I would say 30% of the fueling stations are offline just offline. Can you imagine going to the gas station like, sorry, we're offline. What does that even mean? And that's insane because there are literally thousands, hundreds of gas stations around and at least dozens of charging stations. So it's a tough sell for a hydrogen fuel vehicle unless you really like this car and you live near one of these stations and hopefully it doesn't go offline. So the Mirai gets you on the road quicker than your typical EV. The only issue is you're limited to the road you can drive on based on your proximity to hydrogen fueling stations, which is really a shame because the Mirai is comfortable. It's nice to drive. It's great for road trips that you can't actually take in it. Maybe Toyota will get lucky. Maybe hydrogen fueling stations will start popping up all over the country and the Mirai can start being sold in places outside of California. But until then, the Mirai is a good car trapped in an infrastructure bubble. For more automotive coverage completely surrounded by hydrogen, be sure to subscribe to Engadget.